In the lush countryside of Northumberland, packed with pines, is one of the most unique and interesting English country estates we have ever visited, the famous Cragside. Stay tuned as we explore this fascinating house and its mind-boggling gardens. Today we are at Cragside, which is a place that I've wanted to visit since I was a teenager. I was always fascinated by Lord Armstrong and the pioneering engineer that he was. And so this is a place I've wanted to visit because of those connections and also because it has amazing gardens and one of my favorite flowers, rhododendron. And they are really in bloom right now while we're here in June. While we are waiting here to check in, I just wanted to give a little preview peek at the Cragside Estate. In one of the five lakes that Lord Armstrong built on his estate, and a few of the seven million trees they planted. Our arrival time was one, but we aren't allowed to go to the house till three, so we're going to start by coming in here to the tea room and having something to eat. We got a jacket potato, which came with salad leaves. That's what they said, salad leaves and coleslaw. Funny description. And then this is the chili with a bloomer. Kind of looks like a piece of bread to me. I thought a bloomer was a bread roll. So please tell me in the comments what a bloomer is. So I've said before that I don't like Bakewell tarts, but I decided to try this flapjack, which is a cherry Bakewell flapjack. I'm also kind of on a quest to eat all the different kinds of flapjacks. Since yesterday I had one in Anik that was really different and interesting. That flapjack is good. It doesn't really taste too much like cherry, just almondy and flapjacky. Tastes like oats, but it's good. Lord and Lady Armstrong were both passionate about all sorts of trees and plants. Lady Armstrong managed the project as they took on the grand work of transforming the rocky moorside into a garden paradise covered with innumerable rhododendrons and pines. All the garden designs were well planned based on principles of horticultural science and feats of engineering, including engineered waterfalls and heated glass houses to grow plants native to the southern hemisphere. Among the cliffside of purple rhododendrons, you occasionally see some magenta mutants in the midst. I can relate. I am a magenta mutant. It's so fun to see so many rhododendrons, different colors, just exploding with color all over the place, leading up to Cragside House. There are so many purple rhododendrons, but here under this ginormous tree, all on its lonesome, is this little magenta rhododendron, so I need to go talk to it. It's magenta rhododendron selfie time. So pretty. rhododendrons and coincidentally they perfectly match my very dusty hiking boots. I just love this place. This is my idea of heaven. So look at that. The lovely and fashionable Lady Armstrong also had great taste in colors because magenta rhododendrons were her favorite. I don't know if this is honeysuckle, but it sure smells like it and it smells amazing. This one smells amazing too. That's, 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 it's, it's really more like the traditional a, honeysuckle. Yeah, it's got quite a scent. 
I think this is the best magenta selfie ever. We are in the rock garden. This is the largest sandstone rock garden in all of Europe. And it's pretty incredible. There's lots of gray rocks, moss covered rocks in this rock garden. And then look what's at the end of this path. Some beautiful magenta rhododendron. It's like I'm wearing a big magenta rhododendron crown. <laughs> so you see a lot of streams of water around Cragside because it was the first house powered by hydroelectricity. So water power and running water were critical. And here is the iron bridge that Lord Armstrong designed. Cragside really is an architectural marvel. Shaw was amazing in the work he did designing this home. They started building it in, I believe, 1863, and then several years later did a massive expansion. It's just a maze of different slopes and angles. Really such a gigantic house. First stop on our house tour is the kitchen. The kitchen was, of course, the servant's domain. But because this was the kitchen at Cragside, it was special. Not only did it serve lavish dinners to large numbers of aristocrats and VIPs, but because the house was owned by the innovative Lord Armstrong, it was fitted with the latest in labor-saving devices, including a Victorian dishwasher, a water-powered rotisserie for roasting meats, and a hand-operated dumbwaiter for moving items between the scullery and kitchen. It is also noteworthy that the Armstrong's love of gardening meant that the heated greenhouses supplied fresh produce to this kitchen, even in the cold winter months in Northumberland. I think it's interesting to look at these kitchen tools and imagine what this bustling kitchen must have been like back in the day. And here is a peek at what the dining room may have looked like. This may be weird, but I have always really loved plastic food replicas. Armstrongs didn't have children, but their house was regularly filled with distinguished VIP guests, including the 1884 visit of the then Prince and Princess of Wales, who later became King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. Three years later, Armstrong was made Baron Armstrong, becoming the first engineer and scientist to be ennobled. The Armstrongs also entertained dignified visitors from around the world, including the Shah of Persia, the King of Siam, and two future Prime Ministers of Japan. In the library, we learn that it became the first domestic room in the world to be lit by newly invented incandescent light bulbs. In addition to the magnificent works of art throughout his home, Lord Armstrong created a lovely hallway art gallery, which was toplit with skylights. The most valuable paintings from his collection at the time have since been sold off. 
This stunning sculpture here reminds me of my favorite piece of artwork at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. And these are lovely portraits of Lord and Lady Armstrong themselves. I had heard about this amazing fireplace prior to my visit, but the grandeur and depth and sheer craftsmanship of this massive fireplace cannot be captured on video. You really need to see this in person. I think that's how they kept score of their billiards here in the man cave. This is some of the famous William Morris wallpaper. It's beautiful. Here in the middle of the house courtyard is a giant cliff of rock, along with a view of a large pipe, just reminding you of that hydroelectric power. Unlike Lou Trenchard Manor, which was a small yet lavish manor house we visited that was home to 10 or 12 kids, Lord and Lady Armstrong didn't have any children, but what they did was entertain. And so they constructed an enormous, expansive, lavish home in which they could entertain clients and VIPs of all sorts. We're going through a very magenta rhododendron bit right here. Oh, those are lovely. The Cragside Estate is on the side of a very steep crag and there's just no way to really capture on video how oh, massive and steep and tall this cliffside of garden of rhododendrons is. This is the most ginormous monkey puzzle tree I have ever seen. But since the Armstrongs planted seven million trees, I shouldn't be surprised that one of them ended up being a giant Chilean pine, also known as monkey puzzle tree. This might be my last magenta selfie of the day. These trees are just massive. They're like skyscrapers. So here is one of the five lakes that Lord Armstrong built. This is literally at the very top of the estate, but probably close to the highest point and just gorgeous, peaceful place. biggest lake on the estate. And now for a look at the source of the hydropower. Craigside was the first house in the world to be lit by hydroelectricity, and central to this technology is the Archimedean screw, which was invented in the third century. At the end of the carriage drive is the Archimedes screw that powers Craigside, thanks to the Tumbledon Lake and Debden Burn. Mm -hmm. 
this waterfall and this large Archimedes screw are central to the hydropower that provided electricity to Cragside and made it the Victorian marvel of engineering and innovation that it was. People came from all over the world to see what Lord Armstrong had developed for his house. And guess what? They still do today. I'm glad you could join us on our visit to Craigside today. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.